With YouTube attacking alternative media, please consider supporting the channel via Patreon for just a dollar per month. Link below. Hey, what's going on, everyone? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater, and this this one's gonna be a lot of fun because I actually kind of saw this the other day, but I just I didn't connect it together. I know that Daisy Ridley, because uh, I saw some headlines come out that said that Daisy Ridley knew that J.J. Uh, Abrams had written drafts for episodes seven, eight, nine. Uh, I saw that and I was like, ah, that'd be kind of cool to talk about, but I didn't really look at it too much until I came across this headline here saying Ryan Johnson threw out J.J. Abrams entire last Jedi outline says Daisy Ridley now the movie's divisive as hell all right like it's divisive as hell I've, I've raged against this movie uh, for for a while now I'm gonna continue the the book comes out here in a couple days I plan on doing uh, a book club of that I'll be doing probably chapter by chapter breakdowns to talk about what's new and everything else give my thoughts and my opinions so look forward to that um, but that being said uh, it, it's it's this is this is the problem that we had with, with it whatever JJ had set up in episode seven I want to know what's in those outlines I, I and I have a feeling we're gonna get whatever episode nine was meant to be uh, they're gonna find a way to connect it back through episode eight but let's take a look here the last Jedi remains hugely divisive yeah no duh uh, it was a huge box office and critical success, but split fans with a vocal hardcore group denouncing Johnson's treatment of the franchise. In a new French interview, R uh, Ridley revealed how much Johnson changed from the original version laid out by The Force Awakens director Abrams, saying here that this is one of the things that has most frustrated the dissenters who can't understand how such a long-standing and continuous storyline suddenly has a final three-movie act without a, a, an apparent clear arc and a subject to change as each new director takes over. Yeah! That's a big problem. That that's that's a huge freaking problem. Like, just kind of go back to like JJ Abrams for a second. So he he bailed off a of Paramount Star Trek, right? Which he had done Star Trek and then Into Darkness. Uh, you know, you knew he wanted to do a trilogy. You knew he wanted to do a television show because that's generally where his his attention goes to. And uh, there was problems with Paramount and Viacom and making the deal work. So when it came along for him to jump over to go do The Force Awakens, it was kind of a chance to start over again. It really was. It was a chance for him to go into this this universe that he he loved. Uh, he was handpicked to do it and to go and create something new. So he, he outlined these films. He outlined what he wanted to do with them. He was creating a new arc and Kathleen Kennedy was tasked with trying to create a new expanded universe. And this is where I've argued that Kathleen Kennedy as a whole has trouble really just kind of reining in what's going on because we know that the story group that they put together has not focused on the movies, which I find to be very interesting. I find that to be very fascinating that, that they have not done that. And instead when Ryan Johnson came in, they kind of just, gave him whatever he wanted to do. And they're like, okay. So either they did not like what JJ Abrams was up to with that. Uh, and they thought that going this new direction would be better and in treating it more like uh, not, not a film that has uh, or, a, or a trilogy that has a clear arc, but it has an arc, but they would, you know, they would experiment to get to the end rather than be kind of like George Lucas in the prequels and really kind of laid out in a straight line, which it did. And the thing is everyone was, ultimately fine with that line it was just a lot of the ancillary characters and dialogue and acting that really kind of brought it down but in terms of visuals and set design uh and action the, the prequels are, are actually a lot better than people give them credit for uh but for some reason i i think i think due to the general fan base not liking the prequels as much uh kathleen kennedy felt that she absolutely positively had to like fight back against that and that might be one of the reasons why the last jedi happened it's possible. So it says Ridley discussed the shifting story plans. Um, she says here, here's what I think I know. JJ Abrams wrote episode seven as well as drafts for episode eight and nine. Then Ryan Johnson arrived and wrote the last Jedi entirely. I believe there was some sort of general consensus on the main lines of the trilogy, but apart from that, every director writes and realizes his film in his own way. Ryan Johnson and J.J. Abrams met to discuss all of this. Although episode eight is still very much his own work, I believe Ryan didn't keep anything from the first draft of episode eight. And that is abundantly clear. Abundantly clear. It is. I mean, just like, just go back to the beginning of the movie. 
So you have the opening scrawl that basically says that, uh, that after the defeat of Starkiller base, uh, the First Order, they know exactly where the rebels are. Sorry, the resistance. They know where the resistance is. They've gone there to uh, to attack the planet. The resistance is trying to get away. Um, but uh, we never got the funeral scene for Han Solo, which is going to be apparently in the the book when it comes out. Uh, that scene is going to be in there. Um, we we never, you know, again, we, we find that uh, at the end of force awakens uh poe finn and ray are all at the base right and at the end of the last jedi uh, you know ray and poe meet for the first time which is clearly setting up the love triangle between uh her and and poe and kylo like that's going to be the triangle in the next movie obviously even though they had established it was going to be finn and kylo and her in the triangle uh they decided to give finn rose like arguably the most useless character that was the new addition. I mean, really just like, you know, Hey, if you want a manic pixie dream girl, all about trying to stop child slavery and, 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 you know, animal freaking betting, uh, fine. I get that, but it wasn't the time or the place to introduce that character into the movie. Like I liked Rose's character. Don't get me wrong, but she was ultimately useless and pointless. And she's kind of like episode eight's Jar Jar. I just, let's be fair. Let's be fair that's pretty accurate. So you've got all these things that, you know, okay. Admiral Hodo for one was meant to be this, this, this banging character, this, this very badass character that we were meant to go, Oh damn, when she did what she did, but we never got any kind of actual character development with her. So her popping up and then going out in the same movie made no sense. Episode eight was like episode eight and episode nine crammed together with like 70% cut out. So yes, if he, if she says, I believe Ryan didn't keep anything from the first draft of episode eight, we can basically look at all the plot points that were set up in episode seven and how they were just completely ignored, or in some cases feel like they were retconned in episode eight and then just go, oh yeah. Right. I still think, I still think they should just scrap episode eight, call it a Finn's fever dream. And then, and then have, and then just do episode nine and episode 10 and call it a day. Right. Now, fans primarily suspect that the biggest changes from episode seven to eight concern the uh, con- uh, contentious identity of Ray's parents and the puzzling decision to keep Snoke as a major villain and then dismiss him without properly exploring who he is, which again is true. Snoke, you know, and they kept saying in the in Force Awakens, Supreme Leader Snoke, you know, and the Knights of Ren. You're just like, yeah, those are kind of cool. Those are some bad guys, right? Give us a mythos here. Give us, give us something to like, you know, to kind of sink our teeth into for having a good villain. That's the reason why vader works because vader was a good villain and his arc between episodes four five and six uh and everything was really good because of the way that they established him and then the way that he went through it and through it and through it to the end snoke is a good villain and one that people want more of kind of like darth maul is a good villain that people wanted more of but we didn't get that until the animated series Now, whether Abrams will attempt to return to any of his original concepts when he directs the final movie remains unclear. Oh, God, I hope he does. Ridley was quick to stress how much she trusted Johnson's interpretation of her character's path, saying, We sometimes hear that actors from a blockbuster do not have the opportunity to express their opinion. Thankfully, this has never been my case regarding Star Wars. Every time I wanted to share my point of view concerning a scene or an idea about the script, people took their time to listen to what I had to say and a real conversation started. That being said, I am aware that I'm not a screenwriter or a director, and when I find myself in front of Ryan who tells me that it would be better to proceed like this or like this, I'm always first to say, of course, you're right, no wonder you were given the job. Which then just basically kind of discounts everything she just said right there, right? Because she's like, oh, people really listen to what I had to say until I'm in front of Ryan Johnson, and I'm like, uh... Yeah, you the boss, dog. You know, like that's that's essentially what it boils down to. So, okay. If he tossed out everything that JJ had set up, which would have clearly included uh, nuggets that would have tied into episode uh, nine, because we know that's how JJ creates. That's that's what he does. That's how he creates stuff. So if they dropped all of that, uh, that means it, it, it's. I'm assuming it's going to be safe to say that episode nine will probably uh, almost kind of be a casual reboot of of it. They're going to like come in and and if you want my honest opinion, 
the Terrio J.J. Abrams script is probably going to end up being pretty long. The movie Last Jedi was two and a half hours. I wouldn't be surprised if this one comes in at 245 or three hours long, um, simply in order to give us more more to sink our teeth in, our teeth into there. Um, because let's face it, the 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 evolution of Kylo Ren felt like it, it could have you know there was he wasn't teetering enough with with maybe going to the light before doing what he did. Snoke needed to be around uh, a lot longer. Really, at this point, JJ just needs to make sure that Snoke is Darth Plagueis and and can come back. Right. Maybe setting that up for like down the road saga, like the return of Plagueis, who've mastered death. Um, I mean, we, we've we learned throughout the course of, uh, you know, throughout the like, I think it was said in one of the books, like Pelagus had made Anakin. Like you, you manipulated the force, the midichlorians in order to birth Anakin. So that would be, again, a very interesting uh, plot development if we discover that he was, in fact, made of the force. But it was his family bloodline that was going to be the prophecy. And that would ultimately end the Jedi and the Sith if that's how they wanted to bring it home. Luke will probably end up being a ghost. That's probably one of the reasons why Mark uh, Hamill walked back a lot of his comments as to not anger the fan base and anger the execs at Disney. Because let's face it, he, he he wants to be uh, wants his job and stuff. Um, but Ryan Johnson is not a good storyteller. That's that's the that's the whole point. I think people are trying to get to the movie. While it looked fantastic and the acting was pretty good, Mark Hamill especially, there were just parts that just failed to make sense. I'm hoping that the book uh, that the, the, those deleted scenes and stuff that they created for the book in order to kind of fill out some of the gaps really do fill in some of the gaps. And if not, then that's going to be a problem. And I'm really hoping that at this point uh, they do retcon a lot of it because if they're going to wrap up the trilogy, uh, they'd better do a damn good job. And I think J.J. Abrams knows that's where he's at right now. If anything, I feel like him coming in to do this final movie would be him wrapping up not only the Star Wars trilogy that he began, but also probably uh, making up for not finishing the Star Trek trilogy. Uh, so I think he's going to give it his all. He's going to come in, give us this huge spectacle. And, and I, I hope we learn more. And trust me, as we learn more, I will definitely talk about it. Because I, as much as I am angry at The Last Jedi, I have hope for the future. In J.J. I trust. You may not, but I do. And because uh, I like The Force Awakens quite a bit. Uh, yes, it has its problems. But going back structurally, it was definitely like uh, hitting some of those notes for me that really worked. This one did not. Um, but uh, yeah, so there's that. Anyway, uh, be sure to leave your comments below. Want to hear them. They should be fun uh, if you guys uh haven't already thumbs up the video subscribe to the channel and if you want to win a copy of justice league on blu-ray i'll be giving it away on march 10th uh, check the community tab on the 10th at the same time make sure you're subscribed and comment below and uh also uh, if you want to see more content from me you can do so right now